a miracle, although we don't believe in miracles, happened on Monday afternoon. By the end of the day, she had $25,000 in her bank account. Well, what had happened was, quite a while ago, like several years ago, she had invested some money in a friend's company, and she kind of forgot about it. Well, it turned out that recently the stock went way up, and someone called and said, would she sell her shares? And she said yes, and by the end of the day, the money was in the bank. So, you know, it's just interesting that when we think it's not there, we can't see it, we've just got that limited vision. So we've got to just trust and know it is there. It's there. Well, what about a job? A lot of people have been out of work lately. So what could you do if you've been out of work and you're getting stuck in the, hmm, I don't know if I'm ever going to get a job, I'm getting afraid. Well, I heard of one man who he applied for a job at a certain company he really wanted to work for. And then he wrote himself, a couple days later, a congratulatory letter, an offer letter, offering himself the job. And then he went online, you could go online, and I think he went online, and you can get business cards for only the cost of shipping. And he created a business card for himself with this company's name on it. And he'd look at that card every day, and he'd send himself congratulatory emails. <laughs> and guess what happened? He got called for the first phone screen, past that. Got called in for interviewing face-to-face, and two hours after his last face-to-face -face interview, he got an offer for the job at a far greater salary than he ever thought he'd have. It's just great how that law of attraction works and how we can use it if we choose. Shakespeare said, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we might often win. What if that man, after he applied for the job, started thinking, well, you know, maybe my skills aren't quite as current as somebody else applying. Or what if uh, they th want somebody younger than me? You know, all that kind of thing. So what would the universe have to do? Okay, that's, you're right. They do want somebody younger and they want somebody else. The universe just obeys what we believe. So it's our job to focus on the truth that there is an unlimited possibility for everything. I was flipping the channels one night, and a show was on I never heard of before. The job, let's see, the fairy job mother. <laughs> and since I'm a career consultant, I thought, oh, I'll watch it. <laughs> And um, it was interesting, there was a couple who'd been out of work two years, and they were on welfare. And when somebody's out of work for a long time, it's the energy often will go down and people will get into believing it's not gonna come, I'm not gonna get a job. So what she did was, she talked to them and she said, okay, one of the things we're gonna do is, you know how we say treat and move your feet? She didn't say treat and move your feet, but she said, you need to take some action. So she set up a volunteer situation for them where one day they went to a huge dairy farm and the woman, they, um, the man who owned the farm had the woman do administrative work. And this is what she used to do. And so she did it all day long. She felt really good. You know, it felt good to be working again. Oh yeah, now I remember I'm getting things done. Well, the man, they had milked the cows and he thought that was disgusting, <laughs> but, he, at the end of the day, he found it did feel good to just get something done and feel constructive, you know? So then she coached them on their resume and had you know, the woman get a haircut and things like that, helped them buy um, a professional outfit, and they started looking for work. And what was interesting was they each got interviews, and they both failed the interviews. They didn't get hired for those two jobs they um, interviewed for. But about a week later, 
the owner of the dairy farm called up the woman and said, you know, I really like having you do the administrative work. How about if you come to work and do that for me on a regular basis? And she said, yes. And then, uh, I think it was another week, one, the man got called by the person who'd interviewed him and said he didn't think he was suitable for the job. He had a better job that he thought this man would be um, suited for and hired him for that. So I, I just thought it was interesting. You know, it's, she doesn't teach science of mind, of course, but she's ha helping them, like, imagine it by volunteering, by practicing and giving support. And, and one of the things we do as a church is we give each other support. We have classes where you can study and you can talk about things. You have practitioners and ministers who you can go to and they can treat for you. So there's so much available, why not use it? In um, the secret, or the secret, the power, she talked about a, um, a Nobel Prize winning quantum physicist. His name is Richard Feynman. And he said, now this, listen to this carefully. There is nothing in biology yet found that indicates the inevitability of death. This suggests to me that it is not at all inevitable and that it is only a matter of time before biologists discover what it is that is causing us the trouble. <laughs> and I thought, I love that. You know, it sounds totally outrageous, right? Well, what about when Columbus said the world is round? That was totally outrageous. Or what about when somebody said, you know, I think we can create a ship that'll fly? That was totally outrageous. So I love the idea of this kind of thing is helping me get past my limits, because just like everybody else, it's easy to get into limited thinking. So whatever you need to do to get yourself out of it can really help you bring the new truth and new good into your life. What's so wonderful? about the science of mind teaching is that it shows us a powerful, powerful truth. It shows us that there is only God, that universal spirit, that quantum energy of life, and that, of course, if that's all there is, we have to be one in it. We have that spirit, that power within us. And we can use God law. We can use that universal power to make our lives what we want them to be. Wow. And then, of course, in treatment, it says, you know, first you recognize the allness of God, then unify yourself knowing you're one with it then declare what it is that you're accepting and then gratitude being grateful for what you are treating for knowing it is already there because it's in that quantum unlimited possibility it's there already and then of course releasing knowing there's nothing more you have to do except be open to accept it and move your feet as you feel that inner guidance. Muhammad, the founder of Islam said, gratitude for the abundance you have received is the best insurance that abundance will continue. It's just one little thing. Just be grateful. So today, choose to thank God and choose to make every day a Thanksgiving day. Thank you. Thank you.